do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Dreamer. Alright, y'all, we back with another big body banger. Did I just slap my freaking mic? Anyways, we back with another big body banger. Today, we got something a little different. We finna be reacting to the 10 most dangerous kids in the entire freaking world. Now, I've seen some crazy kids, you know what I'm saying? I've seen some kids that's bad. I've seen some kids that beat their parents, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what type of crazy this is. I don't know if it's, like, crazy, like, insane. Or they, like, be talking to dead people or something like that. Or if they be, like, out here killing people. I don't know. We finna watch this, though. I'm very excited to watch this. If you're excited, smash the like button, you know what I'm saying? Drop in the comments what other stuff y'all want to react to. Feel free to DM me on Instagram videos to react to. If I react to the video you send me, I shout you out. Y'all know how it goes, man. You know what I'm saying? My Instagram is at Juver underscore. Um, don't ask me why I'm not wearing a shirt. I just got out of the shower and have this thing. I put on deodorant, and I don't like putting on a t-shirt right after I, I put on deodorant because I feel like I got to let the deodorant dry first. But I felt like shooting videos, so that, that, that that's why I'm here right now, shirtless, but a shirt over my shoulder. Anyways, a Jewrite.com, buy two, third free, or you can bundle up, say stuff, dollars We got the best do in the game, but y'all already knew this. You just wait. I'm just waiting for you to press the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Press the trigger and buy every single Drew Rag in the entire world, and you'll be a happier person. You know what I'm saying? But without further ado, let's hop right into this. Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here, and today what's we're up, going Charlie? to be looking at the most dangerous kids in the world. Kids are usually seen as sweet and innocent, and a lot of the time they are. But there are a few children and teenagers. She had doodle stains on her face. Teenagers who turned out to be some of the most dangerous people on the planet. Get ready for your jaw to drop when you see what these seemingly innocent children have done. But first, press the subscribe button. Have Morgan Geezer and Anissa Wire. Creepy pastas are fake horror stories spread online that can sometimes be pretty scary. But at least they're not in the real world, right? Well, in 2014, two 12 year old girls brought what was a scary story for entertainment into reality. They spent a year planning to sacrifice someone with the hopes they would please Slender Man. So, one Saturday, the two girls named Morgan and Anissa convinced one of their middle school classmates to go into the woods where they lived in Wisconsin. They tried to take the girl named Peyton Lutner's life with a knife. When they thought they were done, they walked away, leaving Peyton in the woods. However, Peyton miraculously lived and was able to crawl to a local house to call for help. She was in hospital for a few days and thankfully made a full recovery. Afterwards, the creator of Slenderman actually gave his condolences as to what happened and gave Peyton- Pause. So these little girls wanted to recreate- I never played Slenderman, first of all. I'm not even sure what the game is. I know it's the big long dude, you know what I'm saying? I'm the big long dude. But anyways, yeah, I know it's the, the dude that, that suit, he's in the suit and it's at nighttime and you're supposed to like avoid him or something. I don't freaking know. But they wanted to recreate that and they took a, what? Okay, so they're insane. They're stupid. These kids is literally stupid. They wanted to recreate the game. They're not, they're not, something they screw, screwed on, right? And it's two of them. Both of them is stupid. They went and tried to reenact the Slender Man and take a random middle schooler and, Slabber, that looked weird. I'm not gonna do that again. But um, and just stab her and leave her in the freaking woods. But then the girl ended up surviving. Thank, thank God the girl ended up su surviving. But if you go do the job, do the job right. Now, I'm not saying I'm like do. I'm just saying you. They they is mentally messed up. You know what I'm saying? Very mentally messed up. And some money. The two girls were sentenced to prison time at first, but this was later changed to 25 years in a mental home. Some were angry at this, saying they should be in jail forever. I just want to say that if they was black, they would have went to prison, jail, and a mental place. But these are little white girls, so they, they, they transferred from prison to a little rehabilitation center. What do you think about this crazy event of a fake scary story turning real? One thing's for sure, it makes Morgan and Anissa two of the most dangerous children ever to live. Try Next up, me. we have Girl A. On me. June 1st, 2004, a girl who can legally only be referred to as Girl A took the life of her fellow classmate. At 11 years old, Girl A used a knife on Satomi Mitaro, who was also 11 at the time. It happened at an elementary school in Sasebo, Japan. The girl is kind of a mystery, as she was only 12, meaning that by Japanese law, she couldn't be photographed or named. However, I'm not in Japan, so I can tell you her name is actually Natsumi. A teacher found out about what she did pretty soon and after she was taken to a police station. She spent the night saying, I'm so sorry to the police and crying. But why did such an innocent girl do this? Well, apparently Satomi had called Natsumi a goody goody, which was a reference to her weight. Believe it or not, all she was sentenced to was two years in a mental home. This became a Japanese meme as the reason why they should lower the age of criminal responsibility. Wait, pause. This girl killed an 11 year old and only got two years in a mental health hospital thing? What? And she, and she killed him. She killed the other kid because. 
the girl called her kitty kitty, a goody goody. So she decided to be a baddie baddie and off and off in her. Cuddy cuddy her, killy killy her. She's a goody goody and she decided to be a baddie baddie. And she got two years. That's what I'm. That's what I'm pissed. About. Two years. You know how pissed I'd be if I was the parents of the, of the little girl that, that that got killed. Two mother effing years. Not even in prison. Not in jail. Not none of that. At a little mental facility. Like, come on, bro. If it's a black person on here, I promise you they're getting 90 to life. Let, let me see if there's a whole black person inside this entire compilation. Now, I'm no expert on this, but I'm sure all of you are. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm personally torn. Some people say she didn't know what she was doing down to her age, but others disagree. Next up is the Beaver Brothers. This one took place in July 2015 in Oklahoma. Two brothers named Robert, who was 18, and Michael, who was- They got doodle on their face. They put their whole freaking face in the toilet. Look at this dude doodle all over his face. This dude doodle all over his face by his mouth. He was eating the doodle. 16 took the life of their entire family. This included their parents and two out of their four siblings with a knife. But that's not all. What they were plotting was way worse. They were plotting a mass life taking to gain fame. Believe it or not, this is the motivation behind many criminals, which is why some news outlets like Philip DeFranco and more don't show the criminals' faces. The brothers were called the most evil brothers in America by the press and were sent to jail. But why did the brothers not take the lives of all of their siblings and only two out of the four? Well, they first took the lives of David and April Beaver, their mum and dad, and then did the the same with their 12 year old brother Daniel. Seven year old Christopher and five year old Victoria met the same fate. They then tried to do the same to their 13 year old sister but failed and even told her they'd do the same to their two year old sister as well. However the two year old was left unharmed and was taken into foster care. This sure is one crazy story of two very dangerous brothers. Bro, what Coming up next we what? have- What? <sighs> Some of you black people bro. Show me black people. Jasmine Richards. This is one of the most famous dangerous kids in the world. Jasmine Richards from Alberta, USA had a boyfriend named Jeremy Stank. They were both pretty odd and liked to talk about things most people would find scary. A few times Jasmine and Jeremy had talked about taking the lives of Jasmine's family. This was because Jasmine's parents had punished her for dating Jeremy as he was 23 and she was 12. What However, the Jasmine said- Ain't no mother effing way. Hey, wait a minute. What? This ain't funny. She, they was talking about offing the parents because she's 12 with a 23 year old. This is sick. This is disgusting. This is horrible. That's so freaking sad. Oh, a 12 year old is so easy manipulating a 23 year old, you freaking ugly, stupid pedophile. I hope, I'm not going to say that on the internet, but I hope you, look at me, look at me in my eyes. Read what I'm about to say, what I hope this man go through. You heard it? Now times that by 50. That's what I want for that man. This man is. That is horrible. He said it was all a joke and they were never doing it in a serious way. However, in 2006, one night, Jeremy entered the Rich's household and took the lives of Jasmine's parents. She said she was shocked and was in a zombie state, whatever that means, and she couldn't stop or go for help. I don't know about that, but she then did what Jeremy did to her parents, but to her own brother. She was only sentenced to 10 years in the mental ward, probably because of her age, and is that. So she was confused that that the guy killed her parents. So she decided to just finish it all off and kill her little brother. And she only got 10 years in a mental hospital? What is, what? What is going on? Oh, oh my days. But let me get caught with a pound of, good, of the good gas. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to jail for 30 years. Not no, not no, not no rehab center. Not no mental hospital for five years, two years. I'm going for 30 years with a pound of herbs. And this freaking... Out now. However, Jeremy was locked up for 25 years with parole and will be out in 2034. 2034? How many? That man got about 11 more years in him. Yep, coming for you, Jeremy. 11 years? I'm going to be primed, ready to go. I'm going to be in the gym. I'm ready for Jeremy. I'm not going to lie to you. What jealousy is he in? Somebody find it for me. Next up is Shirley Wolf and Cindy Collier. One day, two girls named Shirley, who was 14, and Cindy, who was 15, knocked on the door of Anna Brackett, who was 85. They said a weirdo was following them, and they wanted to come inside and use her phone. Anna let the girls in, but then all of a sudden, they took her life with a knife and ran out of the door. The creepy thing is, Anna was found by her son, who had just driven past the two girls and thought nothing of them. And if you want something even more creepy, the two girls had just done the same thing to another woman before what they did to Anna. They knocked on her door and entered the house, but her husband came into the room, so they decided to leave. 
month. The woman said they were very odd and cleaned the glasses she'd gave them and wiped their phone with cleaning gel after she was done using it. This was to try and get rid of their fingerprints, but even though they did this, it didn't take long for cops to track down the teens. The duo were sentenced to a long time in a mental ward. But why did they do this, you're probably asking? Well, here's the most messed up part. They said they just did it for fun. Most 14 and 15 year olds watch movies or I'm not saying that. We'll go to the mall for fun, but these two girls did this. Next up is Nehemiah Griego. This one took place in New Mexico in 2013. A 15 year old boy named Nehemiah Griego decided to take his mom's off. life one night with a 22 caliber rifle. His brother then woke up and Nehemiah showed him what he Next up is Nehemiah Griego. This one took place in New Mexico in 2013. A 15 year old boy named Nehemiah Griego decided to take his mom's life one night with a 22 caliber rifle. His brother then woke up and Nehemiah showed him what he'd done. His brother then became upset, so Nehemiah did what he did to his mom but to his brother, who was only nine. He then went into his sister's room who were 5 and 2 and did the same thing to them as well. He then waited for his dad to come home and did the same thing to him. His dad was actually the brother of a prominent New Mexico politician named Eric Griego. Nehemiah was actually planning to take more lives but was stopped by the police. In court he even had to wear a mouth guard to stop him spitting at people. He was sentenced to prison time and will be released when he turns 21 which is in just over 2 years. Some say the sentence is pretty short for what he did but a judge said he could be fixed. What do you think about what happened on that terrible day in 2013 to the Griego family? Family. Next up is James Fairweather. Many people have idols. For some, it's noble people like singers, sports people, or Logan Paul. Everybody needs someone to idolize. But some people idolize different kinds of people, like killers. 14 year old British schoolboy James Fairweather. I'm still stuck in that other one. I didn't want to pause it because I'm. That meant. How. <laughs> I thought that these were just going to be bad kids, like they just. They yell at their mama and daddy. No, these folk is killing their mama and daddy. You know what I'm saying? They offing them, hitting them with the killer sauce. Fairweather was one of those people. In 2015, he took a man's life with a knife, and then in 2016, took a woman's life with a bayonet. He was planning to take a third person's life, but was arrested and sent to prison with a minimum of 27 years behind bars. The reason for why he did this was because he was obsessed with killers, such as the Yorkshire Ripper and Ted Bundy. And he even had a picture of Ted Bundy on his cell phone. When he was sentenced, he said, I don't give a sh. The investigation to bust this guy took 1,500 offices and 10,000 hours, and I bet they were surprised when it turned out to be a teen. Next up, we have the Thompson Toddlers. In late 20. Black, they're black. Okay, let's see what they got. 90 years to life. Like, come on, like 90 million billion years. They probably got the electric chair or something. Like, let's see, let's see, let's see. Because if it is, this whole the whole world is racist. If it is, the whole world is racist. 2015, a woman from Texas, USA named Raquel Thompson and her boyfriend decided to grab a takeaway pizza. However, they made a big mistake by leaving their four young kids at home. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem, but it seems their kids have an odd idea of what it means to have fun. Their two three-year-old twins put their 19-month-old sister into their oven. When they got back, they saw what had happened, and the baby was no- What? What? That, what the? Wait, that's- Wait, okay, that's not a black people thing. That's, that's not a black- that's, Let's be honest, guys. That's, that, let's be honest, my brothers. That is not a black people thing. They think that they put the baby in the oven? Oh, my days. Oh my days. No longer alive. The toddler said one of them put her into the oven and the other made it hot. Of course, they didn't know what they were doing and didn't face any charges. However, as adults, I'm sure they will have a tough time coming to terms with what they did before they could even write their own names. Their parents did face charges, however, due to leaving their kids all alone. The twins and their other sibling who was five and slept through the entire thing was placed into foster care. Afterwards, some people said the toddler should face charges, but I'm not so sure about that. What do you think? How old they said the little babies was? Hold on, let me let me go back. Leaving their four young kids at home. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, but it seems their kids have an odd idea of what it means to have fun. Their two three-year-old twins put their 19-month-old... Three-year-old twins. They just now learning to walk. Okay, three years old. Okay, I'm not trying to justify nothing, right? This, the, the kids is, is... I don't know if you can put them in jail if they three. <laughs> like, you can't... There's no jail for three-year-olds. You know what I'm saying? You can't put them in just something gotta happen. Maybe when they turn, but that's not fair either. When they turn 12 to put them in jail, they they don't even remember. That's that, they need. Oh, they need to go inside the mental thing. Raising, they need to be raised like going to like therapy because they're they're crazy up here. You know what I'm saying? They, why would you even think to put your child in there, up your little sister in there? 
You know what I'm saying? They need that. That's what they need. They need to be inside some type of mental institution. They don't need to stay there for the rest of their, their life, but go there like five times a week. You know what I'm saying? Old sister into their oven. When they got back, they saw what had happened, and the baby was no longer alive. The toddler said one of them put her into the oven and the other made it hot. Of course, they didn't know what they were doing and didn't face any charges. However, as adults, I'm sure they will have a tough time coming to terms with what they did before they could even write their own names. Their parents did face charges, however, due to leaving their kids all alone. The twins and their other sibling who was five and slept through the entire thing was placed into foster care. Afterwards, some people said the toddler should face charges, but I'm not so Wait, sure about- the, the parents left the kids at home and the kids is three and the oldest one is five? Why would y'all leave such young kids at home? The, the oldest child is five years old, you stupid idiots! That, what do you think? Next up is Stuart Harding. In 2007, the media nicknamed this kid the most dangerous teenager in Britain. When he was just 19, he was sentenced to at least 20 years behind bars. You see, he took the life of an innocent nurse using a knife. But why did he do this? Well, he simply said it was because he was bored and wanted something to do. The weirdest thing about Stuart's crime is he was wearing a witch costume the entire time. He wore a wig and big dark glasses and said he only stopped when his wig fell off his head. The reason behind his nickname is because after a psychologist spoke to him, he said he sounds like the most dangerous teenager ever. He said that he should never be released, which is why he was jailed for 20 years. Do you think he's the most dangerous teenager on this list, or does anyone else in the list seem even more dangerous? I really just want to know why he was wearing a witch costume when he did what he did. Check out the poll in the top right corner. Bro, what the f did I just watch, man? What the bloody F did I just watch, bro? These kids. is psycho. They're psychopaths. Every single last one of these little kids is psychopaths. Man, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I don't even know what the heck to say. All these stories confused me. They had, they just did it because they was bored. They killed their whole entire family because they was bored. You're bored? Go play Minecraft. Roblox. Call of Duty, maybe. These folk is playing Call of Duty in real life. That's, that's, that's crazy. And then to do it to your siblings, like sometimes you, some, okay. The parents thing might be understandable because maybe their parents like beat them or something like that. Or maybe their parents got on their nerves or whatever like that. But their siblings don't ever do nothing. I'm not justifying them saying kill their parents. I'm not telling you to go kill your parents when your parents put you on a one minute timeout. Calm down, Billy. You know what I'm saying? Calm down. I'm just saying. I I can see that as a small motive, like this small a motive. You see how small that is? There's nothing there. That's how small the motive is to kill your parents when they when they, they piss you off or they annoy you or whatever. But I can see that. But killing your infant siblings, your toddler siblings, like what is wrong with you, you stupid idiots? Man, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. This whole thing just pissed me off, bro. But that's very about it. I hope, I hope y'all kids don't turn out like this. I already know my kids ain't finna turn out like nothing like this. I'm gonna pray for y'all kids. Y'all pray for y'all kids. Everybody pray for all kids around the world. Because this mental stuff is crazy, man. But it's not an excuse to not go to prison. You can go to prison and get mental health. But you need to be in prison too. Like all these folks getting two years in a mental, a mental hospital. What, 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 what? <sighs> Anyways, y'all, that's the end of the video. I'm gonna see y'all. Hey yo, C3, so fly, hop out the butterfly. Wings to the sky, no, I'm never borderline. They choose I, cause I'm way above you. The waves make the haters love you when the ladies come through.